Hey guys and welcome back. My name is Daniel Crony and this is Probability and Statistics. Today we are going to learn how to do a histogram in a program called GeoGebra. GeoGebra is a free to use website that allows a whole bunch of things including calculators, graphing calculators, geometry stuff, and for what we'll be using today, a spreadsheet that makes it capable of creating graphs. So stick with me today, let's learn something new, and let's knock out a histogram using technology. So here we are at geogebra.org. You can see that at the top here, geogebra.org. I'm not going to anything else fancy. This is the homepage for GeoGebra. Once we are here, there are a ton of places to go. Now, a lot of people in GeoGebra use it as a graphing calculator, similar to things like desmos.com. So instead, though, today, we're going to go down here to GeoGebra Classic, GeoGebra Classic. Now, one of two things is going to happen. Either this little window on the right-hand side, the little menu here, is going to pop up or it won't, depending on what type of device you're using. If it does pop up, we want to choose Spreadsheet. If it does pop up, go ahead and choose Spreadsheet. If that little menu doesn't pop up, it's okay. All you need to do is go up to these three lines in the top right-hand corner, click there, and go down to perspectives perspectives now it always defaults to being in graphing so we want to go ahead and click on spreadsheet so again we went to the three lines we go to perspectives and click spreadsheet once you are here you can go ahead and click in the top hand corner of the page to get started for a histogram, we usually have our list of data. Now, today's data is going to be using the ages of the top 50 wealthiest people in the world. Now, you can see the ages right here in our little number here, but no matter how it is set up in your chart, you always want to put all your numbers in column A. So you don't put it in the same format as the way you see it. You put all the numbers in column A. So I'm going to go ahead and type all of those numbers into this right here. So once all of our numbers are in, go ahead and scroll back up to the top. And in the top left-hand corner, go ahead and click on the letter A. Click on the letter A. Now we click on the letter A because you don't have to then like click and drag and hope you get everything. When you click on A, it highlights everything in that column. Once all of your numbers are highlighted, go ahead and click on the miniature histogram button right here. I click there and there are three options to pick from. Now, I want one variable analysis. Later on in this course, we'll go ahead and cover the two variable and the multivariable. But for right now, we are only measuring one thing, and that is the age of the wealthiest people. So I'm going to click on one variable analysis. And you'll notice it brings up my histogram. So looking at this histogram, we can mess around with quite a few things. First off, notice at the bottom, it's not really pretty where they naturally put the class widths, all right? So our little bin widths down here are kind of an unusual number. But we can actually change that by moving this slider left to right. Now, that makes them a little bit skinnier as you go further to the right and fatter as you go to the left. But what if I want to set mine myself? Well, then in that case, you just go ahead and hit the cogwheel right here, and that will bring up a new menu. If you want to set your classes manually, you just click the box next to it, and you will get two new options at the top. So let's say that I want my width to be an even 10 instead of whatever crazy number they were using. And that does look a lot nicer, but let's say I want to go a step further and go ahead and say, hey, instead of starting at zero, Let's start at 30, since I don't have any numbers underneath that. And you can see that our first little bin here now is from 30 to 40, and then from 40 to 50, and so forth. Now, what about this next little option here, the class rule? Well, notice it has some inequality signs here. And what this is addressing is, let's say, for example, I had a data point of 40. Well, then does 40 fall into this bar or this bar? That is what this little option here is deciding. If you put this top one, it will include 40, your border to the ends of your bin, in the left-hand side bar. 
If you click on this one, it will include it in the right hand bar. Now you'll notice that as I clicked on that, some of my things changed because you can see over here, I have numbers like 60 and 40 on the dot. So when I switch it, I am actually changing those into another one of my little bars. So 40 would jump from this one up to this one when I make that change. Now, what about some of these other options? Well, cumulative just makes it so that instead of the histogram separating them into each bin, actually take each bin and just add it on top of the last one. So in other words, it's going to keep growing from left to right. So this is what that would look like. And you can see by the time we're done, we have all 50 people, all 50 people. So this just kind of shows you the gradual growth as you go. At the same time, you can also switch the left-hand side to be percents instead of counts. Remember, counts mean how many people fell in that category, whereas the relative means what percent of people fell. Now, it does leave it as a decimal, but you can see here almost somewhere between 25% and 30% of people fell into this class right here. And you can still show that as cumulative instead. And instead of going up to the total of 50 people, it'll go up to the 100%. Now, I don't wanna dive into the stuff with normalized for right now or normal curve because we'll cover a lot more of that once we get to normal distributions later on. Now, going back though, one thing that might be helpful is knowing what the actual frequency table is. Yes, it's easy to see things like 14 people fell into this bin, but what if I want to see the table that shows that? Well, I can go ahead and click frequency table and underneath it will show me each of my intervals and how many people fell into each one. And remember, we can switch those borderline ones like the 40 by just clicking this button here and it will adjust your table accordingly. This can be a nice easy way to have both your table and your histogram. To get rid of this little extra menu over here, go ahead and click on the cogwheel again and you will be back to the full picture. If you wanted to export this little histogram out, you could easily one of two ways. You can just use the snipping tool on your computer to kind of highlight it, take a picture of it, and copy and paste that way. Or you can click on this little button right here which allows you to export it as a picture where it will download as a picture into your download folder. Either one of those ways is great to add this to any type of PowerPoint or presentation that you're doing. So guys, with that said, this has been creating a histogram using the program called GeoGebra. Hopefully you learned something new today. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button below. And if you wanna keep seeing videos like this, go ahead and click subscribe to see my new videos each week. Again, my name is Daniel Caproni and this has been probability and statistics.